world modern. You know, just show it. Somebody, you break the fan, you made characteristics that makes them look modern. Facial Right, right, okay. Solid, solid. Clean lines, good one. Anybody else? How about a negative space? That's a good what you're talking about here. Lots of negative space. Um, Asymmetrical, that's a really, really good one. I like that one a lot. Okay, so what about traditional quilts? Can anybody throw some answers out for me here? Nobody knows. Yeah. Patchwork, right. Repeated blocks. Um, what else? Printed, the, the colors, the printed, some of the printed prints on them. You know, you've got more traditional prints. What I found, sorry guys, I only have 15 minutes to talk, so I'm going to talk pretty fast for today. What I found is that some of the patterns I was designing were appealing to both customer bases for me. Because I have, I have customers I've had for a lot of years, and I know what they're going to want. They're going to buy the modern clothes that I design, or they're going to buy the more traditional clothes that I design, and that's fine because I just have both. But then I had a few clothes that started popping up, and everybody was buying them. And I thought, well, what's going on here? And I started looking at them and thinking about how we see, now, never mind the, the actual definitions of modern and traditional, but how we as quilters see something that's modern and how we see it as traditional. And actually, a lot of those elements cross over. A lot of them, improvisational piecing, that's often used you know, when you design a modern quilt. But crazy quilting, they've been doing that for a long time, right? So a lot of these characteristics are, you know, in both uh, modern and traditional quilts. So I started realizing and noticing that I had these quilts that we're calling crossover quilts because they're appealing to both sets of my customers. And I like things that appeal to everybody because then more people buy them and that's more money in my pocket, more money in your pocket, and I like to make your day. So I want to give you patterns that will appeal to all of your customers. How do I make a crossover quilt? A lot of times what I do is I take a traditional block and I mess with it. I make it different. I twist it up and make something different. This is one of my brand new patterns. Um, it's called Pork. Um, this is the smallest. This is actually a baby blanket here. Um, these are log cabins. But see what I've done with them is I've kind of expanded them, took some pieces off some sides, and just messed with them because I didn't want to follow any rules, and it made this fabulous, fabulous. You know what, you want to give that to Melissa because she's shorter than me? And then <laughs> this is another, um, this is another example of pork. This is a bigger size and done in fabrics that are even more, a little bit more solid. This was made what, by, these were both made by testers, brand new pattern both. Both made by testers, and you can see this lady over here, she's actually more of a traditional quilter. She used this print in it. I said, that's fine, use a print. This lady, she doesn't use print. Okay, she just does solids, marbles, things like that. She likes to use those. So that's one good example of that. Another good example of taking a traditional block and pulling it apart, but making it where it's fun and fresh and different, that you use this beautiful old block. Um, this is an evening star. It's sometimes known by other names, but I like evening star for it. I pulled it apart. I added some stuff in there to make it look like it's a shallow. So easy. This is not a hard pattern. No, I believe this is a mystery quilt for everybody. I don't, I don't like to exclude anybody in my mystery quilt. So that one is actually really popular and was one of the main reasons I, I realized that there are crossover quilts. A lot of folks will take, you know, it's just about picking the fabrics. Uh, what fabrics are you going to use um, to make this this pattern uh, look more? Turn it around. That's the next. And that's sideways. <laughs> Um, my four-year-old made that quilt, and she stitched every line in that quilt. So these are easy patterns, um, and they go by quick. This one is so great, um, this pattern to sell in your shop. And let me tell you why. I had a designer. She made it. She texted and she emailed me at the end of the day. She said, I just ordered four more kits in different colors, because she wanted to make it four more times, because it goes so fast, and it's such an addictive kind of, kind of little technique. She loved it. Okay, let's see. What else can we show you here today? Um, this was one of our original crossovers. 
Um, some of you may have seen this pattern, it's been around for a while, it's outside the box. Um, the reason I'm bringing this to show you, this is the smaller size that we've had on the market for a while, but because of pot good demand, we are coming out with a 100 inch square version of outside the box. Folks want it to go on a bed and that obviously doesn't fit on bed. So we're coming out with a bigger one of that. You can see this one's asymmetrical, but it's so fun to play with the fabric. If you look at the uh, large size that's here, the top corner of your flyer, that's the new one that's going to be released at the end of next month. The king size outside the box, you see what we use tones there. Those are Marblehead by Ro Gray for uh, Fabric Flow, Camper Studios for Fabric Flow. It looks totally different than the one at the bottom using the brown and the prints. Okay, so it, it makes it feel more modern. This picture feels a little more modern, so it just brings a, a few more people in, a different, a different fabric choice. Uh, this one's really large. This is unexpected twist. It's on your flyer. It's just so unusual. I realize it. I don't have a great explanation, but I got a good response from everybody about this. So it's just sometimes something completely different. Uses some of those elements, lots of piecing, an all over design without a lot of negative space, but at the same time, very fresh um, and young looking. This one's great because this one can, you really can utilize the fabrics to make it, to define, um, to define the type of quilt you want it to be. Um, you know, throw, throw, throw 30 repos in this quilt, it's a completely different quilt, y'all. Okay? Easy. And you know what I do for my customer? If you order at least 12 of these patterns from us for your shop, I will help you kit it. Now I told you I was going to talk about kitting a little bit. I will help you kit it. If you have fabrics in your store that you want to move, now I'm going to help you order fabrics. If you need to order fabrics, I can let you know how to order bolts of fabrics. But if you're trying to move some cell fabrics in your store, I'm glad to help you. If you order at least 12 patterns, you can send me up to three colorways of fabrics you have in your store. I'll plop them into it and give you a digital image and you can show your customers what that quilt's gonna look like without sewing the sample. Because I'm gonna help you out because I like to make your day. All right, I've got a couple more. I have no idea how I'm doing on time. This one's called Friends and Fellows. Let me tell you, I don't have two samples of this, but this looks completely different if you do it in solid. It is a very fun pattern. I believe it is on your flyer. This is called, like I said, Friends and Fellows. Do you see? Do you see the traditional block that I changed? It's a sales trail. All right? So I just cut that block up, twisted it around. I still put this traditional block in here, cut it up a few places. Everybody loved it. So it worked out well. Let's see what I'm going to show you. Okay, here's a good example. Now this one, I took a traditional block, okay, the leaf, but I put <laughs> with it a lot of negative space, an asymmetrical, let's turn it actually so the leaf is falling. Right? <laughs> okay, lots of negative space for those people who want, want that negative space. The quilters, the people who really get into the quilting can put all kinds of fun new designs over here. Traditional block makes those traditionals say, hey, that's so pretty and I've never done it that way. Some of these people have been quilting a while and they like to see something different. <laughs> okay, um, I got, I've got a little bit of time left. Um, so this one's Fire's Radiance, again, one of our older patterns. Um, it's a Lone Star, y'all. It's strip piece, okay? This is just the center, it's just the medallion. A lot of times for this pattern, and you can see the pattern um, on your paper, and a lot of my patterns have several different sizes included within the pattern, and this is one of them. A lot of the more modern-minded folks will just make the star on this, and they'll add something on their own, they'll change it up, but they want that star. It's like colored it differently. 
that's all I did. I just colored it differently. And it made folks, you know, some of the more modern-minded people say, I want to do that. Some of the more traditionally-minded people said, hey, there's a Lone Star I've never made before. I've made Lone Stars, but I've never made that one before. So they picked it up as well. And I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. Do have questions? I feel like I'm speed talking. <laughs> Yes. Come by the booth and talk to me if I'm not there. Feel free to have them call me and I'll come back. Everyone should have gotten their uh, coupon for free pattern. Come by the booth and pick a free pattern. <coughs> See here.